Hi, I'm Kate Fuller and, and I'm speaking to Julie Hurt and we are making light. So Julie, I see boxes behind you. Explain. <laughs> oh, explain. Uh, we are in the process of moving from Anchorage, Alaska to Houghton, Michigan, which is up in the Upper Peninsula of the Mitten State when you look at a map of the U.S. So I'm not any going to be here. I'll be up here. Anyway, but yes, that's about 3,500 miles away. So we are wow. in two weeks. We will begin drive down to the lower 48. We have to go through Canada. The borders are closed, so we have to go through very quickly. Um, we are allowed to go because we are moving and have proof of moving. But yeah, that's all this lovely. Why, why do you have to go through Hmm? Why do you have to go through Canada? Is that just quicker? Uh, Alaska is not physically connected to the lower 48. We oh. hang off. So I, had to, so I do this with hands, mapping with hands. So if the lower 48 is here and you go all the way to Seattle, there's this whole chunk of Canada and then Alaska's way up there. So, yeah. So that, you essentially have to go through Canada to get out. Yeah. To, if we're driving, yeah, there's no other way. And there's many places in Alaska you can't even drive to. There is, like, for example, here's your little geography lesson for the day. There's a little section of Alaska that hangs in the, in a lower part, if you will. Um, it's connected very much to uh, Canada. Like, um, I'm not even going to get it right. So I'm not going to say it because it'll look like a total dork. But you can't drive there. Like, I can't drive to Juneau, Alaska from here because one, there's, no roads to it, even if I wanted to. We watch ice road truckers, you know. Oh yeah, that's a different road though. <laughs> I did drive that road though. We drove that all the way up to the Arctic Arctic Ocean. So that was fun. Wow. And Ned, wow. our RV that we named Ned for my maternal grandfather. So, wow. yeah. So Julie, you mentioned something in your email to me that I would like for us to address. Yeah. And it was a reference to a haunted house. Yeah. So we have purchased a home in Houghton, Michigan that we have not physically been in yet. We, our realtor, did FaceTime. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, first of all, in the time of COVID, it is, I guess, the thing people are doing where you get videos shot by your realtor and then they do FaceTime tours. Um, so we did that. And I have no sense of the energy or how the house feels in that regard. I like the pictures. I think the house is cute. It needs some TLC. So I know there's like fun things to do to the house that I like doing, um, gardening and whatnot. However, this week I had um, someone do a reading on me, a psychic reading on me, and my paternal grandmother arrived who has been, who passed away quite some time ago. And uh, she arrived and told us to just get going, like we're ready to go, which is true. Um, and then she said, when I got there, I was going to have to clean, cleanse the house, which I thought maybe she meant physically, because I don't think anyone's lived in it for three or four years. So, but no, she meant spiritually. So it seems there is a, potentially a spirit there that needs to um, be addressed. I'm not sure what all that means yet. So we'll have to see when we get there. And before we actually live in the house, we need to address it is what my grandmother told me. So I'm a little, I'm, I'm a bit nervous. Scared would be a good word. <laughs> Excited too, because I've never done that part before. So I'm, I feel like it's part of learning, but I'm terrified. I'm also terrified. You bought a pack, right? I bought a what? A pack. A pack. You said that you'd bought. Oh, something. a kit. Yes. Yeah. A kit. Yeah of sage an instruction book um because i you i like my instructions um <laughs> i like my structure you see sage there's a feather i think involved there may be a candle i gotta look and see it was the one that when i went to this etsy.com she my the person told me go at etsy this is what you search on that's what i did so i picked the one i was the most drawn to because i figured that was the one i needed so and so I bought I, sage because i didn't know I um, I have some opinions on this. Fabulous. <laughs> but I have to, full transparency, I've never dealt with a, well, to my knowledge, a malevolent or even 
are, um, I, I just can't think what the term is. Like when I do the body code, you come across a lot of energies and the um, founder of the body code is very Christian. So it tends to be written in religious language, which I mean, it's not the, the whole body code is absolutely um, available to everyone. But in his explanations of things, it does tend to go down the um, asking for Jesus Christ's help, whatever, which actually I have no issue with. I believe Jesus was a good man. I can ask for his help or I could. I don't know, ask for Sally's help, I don't, you know, whatever, I think it's available to everybody. Um, but there is, and he's written a bit on what they call entities. So I can tell you what I know about that, but I, I will say that I, <laughs> if there's any witches or wicker out there going, ah, she's talking shit, I apologise. I personally think the power of all these things in what, how they can hurt you is is entirely down to how you view them mm -hmm. so they can cause real damage but only if you are afraid if you know what i mean so i do not underestimate at all the power of these things but i also believe that if you believe they're just energy and you can get rid of them that's a good place to start so whilst you have your say what's that i just said you when you said that the fear of being afraid just made me think it's the next moose <laughs> yeah. yeah but but it was interesting okay so with the with the um, body code you um you just identify the energy and you literally through your intention i think the wording i used because that was the wording they used was um i think it was in the name of jesus christ i ask you to leave or something and it actually doesn't matter now i would say in the in the in the by the powers of the universe, I'd ask you to see. But actually, even further than that, our lovely Matt Khan says, with entities, certainly, there is no such thing. They are all a part of us. Now, I don't know how this works with an, an energy that's external to you, but that you can't be possessed by anything. They are parts of your soul that have been left behind. Mm. So I would treat them with love. And actually, um, although, um, obviously, um, it's not like I can see evidence of them. I know that, that, but I find, I can't say it's more effective, but it feels more effective now to say to these parts, instead of with an entity, which I would normally say, whereas before I start off by, you know, I command you to leave Nyla and never bother her again, to sort of like, I'm sending you away with love. Um, and now I would just say, um, you know, First, uh, this, Matt Khan did a whole thing on this, but I respect your power. Mm -hmm. So I would say, to if I found an entity on Nyla, the hen, I would say, um, I respect your power. And I understand that there have been circumstances that have caused this to happen. And I'm not belittling whatever's happened to you and you have my full compassion for what that is. But um, do you not feel that the time is now that we could integrate you back to Nyla with love? I would use that sort of language rather than get the hence the evil Tulsa. It's more like, you know, are you ready to come back to be with Nyla? And and if it's for me, I'll be saying, are you ready to be reintegrated? So it's like an inner child almost. Are you ready to be reintegrated into my light? And then I just visualize me putting my arms around them and bringing them in. Almost like an, not a naughty child or an errant child. I do think the respect your power is very important. He seems to think that is because you don't... The reason these pieces, again, we're talking about something that's, I, I'm rambling, aren't I? You're what? I'm rambling. Oh, no, no, no. I'm listening to everything. You're soaking um, it all in. <laughs> when, um, I've, you see, I've, now I've confused myself. Sort of bringing them into myself, the reason, you know, to, I, I appreciate that's not the same as when they're external, but if you bring them into yourself, the reason that they have persisted and not come along with the rest of you is because at some point, like an inner child, at some point, um, you know, you moved on and this bit of you went, well, actually, nah, you know, like, oh, you, you know, so there is a, there's an element of sort of anger and that you, for, what, for whatever happened at that time, that piece of you did not feel heard or appreciated 
or whatever. And despite your attempts to heal it and move on, it was like, uh uh, like you're just not getting it. So there's a bit of it that needs to be acknowledged, as in whatever was going on at that time that causes that piece of you to to go basically fuck you to the rest of your soul it's hurting and wasn't being wasn't being heard at that time so it's a way of just acknowledging mm-hmm. that you played a part in in whatever happened but now let's all get on you know and that's that i respect you if it doesn't mean that i i you know that i will kowtow to you and allow you to ruin my life what i'm saying is i'm acknowledging the story that brought you here And I respect the power you have over me. I don't like the power you have over me, but I respect it. And that's Matt Carr's bit. So I think think with all these things, the most important thing is utter and complete belief that you are safe. And all you're doing is helping some energy move on, move in, wherever it's got to go. It doesn't matter. That's really okay. Uh, what I find interesting too is that about a week before I had this reading, I was either looking at a picture of the house or something, and I had this. I feel like my guides were telling me, "Hey, there's going to be you're, this house. You're, this house is haunted," is what they said, and you're going to have to deal with this when you get there. But don't worry about it; it's going to be okay. So when she was talking with my grandmother, um, and she said, "I don't want to tell you this, but I'm feeling all clammy and icky and gross." but your grandmother wants me to tell you this, but I don't want to tell you this and I, about the house. And I'm like, you can tell me because I had a feeling I knew what it was. And so she, she hymns and haws and then she finally said, yeah, your grandma says there's a, a spirit there. And I'm like, oh, I'm not surprised. So I wasn't surprised. And then, but the more I talk with my guides about it, it is more of this um, sense of, it's not there necessarily to hurt us. And it's more about it's attached to this house because this family, I think, from what we can gather, has been attached to this house for a couple generations. And so there's just that attachment. So, but when you were saying some other things about a part of me, because that was the other part that I'd been having, I'm like, well, for all source, why is this little bit hanging over here? But now that makes sense too. So I'm every time I start to think, oh, I should be afraid, no my guides say, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's all good. It's all good. So, yeah. And then I was talking about the classmate of ours and she was saying that you're absolutely protected by the angels and all the, all your guides. So you, there's nothing to worry about. Now, again, if you Google stuff like that, some people go crazy about um, protecting yourself, you know, and, and again, I, I sort of, it seems, I'm going to, I don't know if it'll make me sound like a complete tosser or, or, or what, but. I just don't believe that with infinite intelligence, with the power that creates worlds, that I would need to recreate a shield every single day, Mm -hmm. right? Surely, if I have the understanding that if I believed I needed shielding and I ask my spirit guides for help, I understand that I need to keep in constant contact with them. But assuming I am in constant contact and I'm continually aware, do I need to reassert something every single day? I mean, I appreciate it's a good idea to reassert how you feel about something, but it just seems, it just seems like an awful loophole in, in infinite intelligence. If you forgot one day that you're suddenly going to get knocked down by all these evil spirits, it just feels a bit clumsy. <laughs> you know, I just would have thought that, um, and Matt Khan, on the other hand, says you absolutely do not need to shield yourself. What the f- are you shielding yourself from well that's i would almost <laughs> to begin to build that relationship with your guides or you and or in matt khan's worlds or words begin to drop that veil you're already building the shield or whatever because your energy is different and right? he's saying there is no energy outside of you so what are you what are you building a shield exactly. so whatever this is in the house is clearly has some attachment to you. Otherwise, you would never, this message wouldn't have come to you. Right, true. Yeah, good point. So, I mean, there's nothing to stop you communicating with it before you go and asking. Didn't even think of that. But I do think that, like, burning sage and stuff like that, it's nice to have a ritual. I think rituals are all about making people feel like what they're doing it's 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 uh it's another illusion so what we all do we have all these rituals that make things real it's like and in, in this 
this will completely destroy your career. But it's like marketing. Like, if you believe that your your vibration, but if you believe the sex the success of your business is down to your vibration and not down to your marketing, but marketing gives people the confidence to know their business will do well, and that's why it works, not because of the marketing. If you know what I mean. I absolutely know what you mean. It's and that's an interesting. So you're <laughs> That's so because that's another thing though I've been reflecting on the last couple of weeks, um, and I think particularly because we're reading the Matt Con book in our side book club, um, and I subscribe to a news, his newsletter, so I see these videos. But you know, I've been thinking how disinterested I would be in marketing when I was doing it. I can remember at different agencies I've worked at where people's hairs on fire because a pixel's not firing or the ad's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And I'm like, just chill out. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Um, and I just, I never had that burning, oh my God, gotta do this kind of a thing. And so I was just, I was just sitting back, if you will, and like looking at it going, oh, that's just kind of interesting. And now I'm out of it and I don't even miss it. Not you were ahead of your time, Julie, because as they say, if it, um, so what's the example I use? The law of attraction example. But if somebody um, does not believe they can be successful and is not doing a business for the right reasons, it doesn't matter how much they spend on marketing, they're just never going to be successful. Yeah. You can spend gazillions on a marketing campaign that, that is, it might be absolutely fabulous and your business will still not succeed. Mm -hmm. You know, even if the it brings in the leads, you either won't be able to keep them or you won't be able to fulfill them or you won't, you know. Yeah. Which is a good thing, but also terrifying at the same time because mm -hmm. it's actually all about your vibration. Yeah. As Nick Rowe says, um, what is it? It doesn't really matter what decisions you make because <laughs> what happens is largely down to your vibration. <laughs> I totally believe it, though. I mean, even when I'm listening to the podcast that I mentioned last time, the Abraham Hicks ones, I mean, that's, that that's part of too like some of the questions I have at some point too I'm sure will come up for you or um it's just like the slight the slight the slight see the slight nuance and you just kind of and any other stuff comes or it doesn't come or why you know because I forget if this guy was asking her this on this podcast this week about when he gets on her cruises he just has the best time but he can't replicate that and so she's saying, well, yeah, because you're asking to replicate the exact same environment when if you just realized how you felt and what put, not the cruise doesn't put you in that vibration. You put yourself in that vibration. And so then she goes through and yeah, he thought he was going to stump her. I think that was the one, there was one this week where they thought they were going to stump her. She just laughed because <laughs> that was their intention going into it. And she just laughs in the beginning. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to have to sign up for that because I haven't. I've been missing it. I, I have had another download from them, actually, but I haven't listened to it yet. But as I say, that's just her uh, reading out questions from people, which just doesn't have the same energy as the oh, yeah. sort of conversations. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I... Uh, uh, there was something I was going to ask you. No, you go, because like, my brain's gone blind. Can I... If you don't talk quickly, I'm going to have to cut this out. Oh, no, I, can, so then I do have a question. Though, and then back on Abraham Hicks. So this vortex, what is the vortex? I don't understand what she's talking about. Said, okay, like, so what? It's just, um, it's basically everything you've ever asked for ever in your life. So it's everything. You just think of it oh. as all of your future, your current desires and past desires, everything you've ever wanted is there and that's your future reality if you allow it in but in even negative stuff can be in my vortex no oh only positive oh so when you're in your vortex you're basically in alignment with everything that you have desired and asked for okay and yeah. when you are in alignment your what's in your vortex can come to you got it Okay. Mind you, Nick, Nick Bro, so being, it's, it's, there's two distinct things that he talks about, and that is probably clearer. So, alignment is being in alignment, as in being available to source, or, or rather in connection with source. But what will manifest depends on your vibration at that time. 
That makes you sense. have to be in alignment. No, you don't have to be in alignment to manifest. But if you want to manifest something you want, as opposed to something you don't want, then you need to be in alignment. Yeah. I heard her because say manifestation that. happens irrespective of alignment. So if you're sitting there worrying about um, not feeling safe, something's going to happen that makes you not feel safe. Yeah. Yeah. I heard her say something. I believe it was desire. When expectations are met, it met, it's your, oh shoot, now I forget it. It's desire and something coming into it. Oh no, desire and alignment came together or something like that is when expectations are met. And I'm like, oh, okay. Just lots to think about. Yeah. Of late. Yeah. Did you remember what you were going to say or ask? No. Okay. We, so we can either um, talk more about spirits and I, I do I have to say Julie because I don't want to scare more of you but there are people that will possibly cuss and swear at what I've said and say it's all nonsense and you need to protect yourself and blah 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 but I am um, I either hopelessly naive or I just I'm not scared I just don't think these things because scare you I just don't if you're no, not frightened yeah I don't feel I just then when I when she confirmed it this week and then I just sat with it with my guides I just never felt I don't feel afraid I don't it, I'm reminded of um I heard a talk from a Lakota leader so are you familiar with Lakota that a native a native um American um tribe here in the United States probably even into Canada because I'm ignorant enough to not know exactly where they were based but I want to say like the northern part of the United States um anyway but I heard him do a, a talk and uh he did this thing where when you come home you sit for a moment put your feet on the floor sit and say I am home Thank you for giving me shelter and you thank the entity you know the the thing that is your house and so when i was thinking about the um this spirit and whatnot like my guys just told me there's nothing to be worried about and i do feel like everything happens for a reason right and that's all of this too and this has always intrigued me mm -hmm. this type of stuff has always intrigued me since i was a little girl um i've always felt like my grandfather or my grandmother has been around um when I did a very, my very first guided meditation, my grandmother was there. So I feel, and it's not necessarily with her, but I feel like I'll just, I, I have the tools. Plus I know all of you. <laughs> so I have like my guide team, I've got angels, I've got grandma, I've got all of you. Like, I feel like I've got it. And I don't want to go into it with any animosity. There's a reason why, to me, I feel like there's a reason why there's that connection there. I loved how you described it earlier because that really helped as well. Um, and I just need to, honor that and you know ask it to not bother us you know yeah, yeah. so Fine. we'll take very good Great. house so that's, that's really exciting i look forward to that i know <laughs> more stuff to talk about document i just don't so, want a movie i don't want a hollywood movie that i don't want to live through a you know what i mean like poltergeist i don't want to i feel like i i'm sure I'm sure someone said it was because I watched a um, it, it was a old TV series about a sort of poltergeist. I don't know if it was the original, mm. but then someone said it was a hoax. If they found out later, it was a, I don't know. I don't, oh. know. don't even let's not even no. Don't even think about that, right? <laughs> So everyone, you just listened to Kate's and my conversation regarding the um, potentially pending haunted house that I may be walking into when we go to Holt, Michigan, but we couldn't find a good place to, because we moved into another topic and quickly. And so we couldn't find a good place at it. So that's why you saw that. Whoop. However, we just wanted to come back and say, thank you for joining us for Making Light. I'm Julie Heert. That's Kate Fogo. As I, I don't know if it's actually pointing in the right direction as you look at this, yeah. but, <laughs> and we'll see you next time on Making Light. Thanks.